Quirks! Where would the world of My Hero Academia be without them? These unique supernatural abilities and traits are the very essence of the My Hero world. Everyone has one, and if they don't, they wish they did. But what if I told you there was actually a lot more behind these superpowers than you would initially think? In fact, instead of being the essence of the world, what if I told you they were the actual essence of their users? But before I begin this video, I have to let you know that yes, you too, dear viewer, have a quirk. And it is the greatest ability of all to hit that big red subscribe button right in front of you and click on that bell icon to keep up to date with all of the new amazing My Hero Academia content the Lunchtime Crew is producing. Truly, the greatest quirk of all. Now, with the sleazy self-promotion done, we can go back to the video. You see, while re-watching the My Hero anime for the bajillion time and fantasizing about having a quirk, I realized that these magical abilities aren't just supernatural powers. They're in actual fact, a reflection of their user's personality. Quirks are the physical manifestation of their user's true identity and nature. The easiest example to explain this with is Bakugo. Bakugo is loud-mouthed, arrogant, and quick to a fight. He's easily riled up, and he bursts out. He's explosive, just like his quirk. And he's not the only one like this. In fact, everyone in My Hero Academia is. Uraka is bubbly and cheerful, and her attitude often puts people in good spirits. And what does her quirk do? It lightens anything she touches, taking away any weight it once held. Ida is always the straight man, making sure everyone stays in line and gets straight to the point. And his quirk literally makes him go straight from point A to point B in the most efficient way possible. Even Todoroki's quirk is a reflection. Most of the time, he's calm, collected, and doesn't show any sign of pressure. He's as cool as ice. But if he really needs to, he can get fired up, both figuratively and literally. This reflection doesn't just apply to the main cast either. Aizawa is a minimalist. He doesn't like anything flashy or unnecessary. He believes in efficiency and making the most out of the basics. His quirk takes away people's flashy abilities and forces them to go back to the fundamentals. The basics. Mirio doesn't let anything stop him, both literally and mentally. And his quirk, RIP, allows him to surpass any obstacle in his way. Endeavor is a wildfire. However, when he concentrates and becomes more focused, so do his flames. If we want to take this a step further, we can look at the character's relationships. Bakugo doesn't have many friends, because, you know, besides being a huge dick, no one can handle his explosive temper, except for one person, Kirishima. Kirishima is not only Bakugo's first real friend, but he's also one of his closest, because he's strong enough to withstand Bakugo's outbursts. Kirishima's hardening quirk is the perfect counter against Bakugo's explosion. So Kirishima being the only person to be able to handle Bakugo makes perfect sense, because just like Kirishima's quirk is designed to take on Bakugo's explosions, his personality is capable of withstanding Bakugo's loud-mouthed persona. When you really look into it, you can see that the idea of quirks acting as an extension of one's personality applies to every character in the series. But the question remains, do quirks develop to match a personality, or do people change to match their quirks? It can't be a coincidence that every character is like this, so it must be one of these two possibilities. Which adds even more questions. Are certain people just inherently evil because of their quirk, or do people with foul intentions gain more useful quirks because of their devilish nature? Characters like Shinzo and Gentle question this system altogether. Shinzo has a seemingly inherently villainous ability, yet he defies his so-called fate and tries to follow down the path of a hero. Gentle's quirk, on the other hand, is neither inherently good or evil, yet his intentions have always been about the greater good. While both characters' quirks act as an extension of their user, Shinzo's mind control is a representation of his desire to be heard and noticed for the right reasons, and Gentle's elasticity resembling his flexibility towards the law when it comes to his dream, neither character's morality is determined by their abilities. However, these characters could just be outliers. 80% of the world's population have quirks, so two people being different is minuscule in the grand scheme of things. I mean, it can't be a coincidence that every member of the League of Villains has a power that perfectly matches their evil desire. Shigaraki wants the destruction of both the world and society, and his quirk literally destroys anything he touches. Toga's obsession with people becomes so strong that she wants to become them, and her quirk is just that. She can become anyone. I mean, it works even in Twice's case. He just wants friends, and his quirk allows him to duplicate as many friends as he wants. These characters and their abilities are too perfect to be an accident. There has to be some correlation between quirk 
and user. But Mr. Lunchtime, what if it's not the people or the power? What if it's actually society's prejudice on people with powerful quirks? What if because people have inherently evil quirks, the rest of the world pushes them towards villainy? Well, yes, Dave, that could also be true. Wait, really? Enough of you! Ah! But yes, that's actually another good point. It could be that because people have specific powers, society pushes them to be more like a person they would expect to have said power. Tokoyami could act dark and edgy because that's exactly the way society sees a birdman with a dark creature living inside of him. What if Baku is loud and arrogant because that's how society views a person who is a literal bomb? The League of Villains could have been pushed towards their goals because society forced them to in the first place. No, society is perfect. So it makes sense for the flaws of the My Hero Society to lead to the creation of some of the greatest villains. Whatever the reason is, there's a direct correlation between personalities and quirks. Whether it's the quirk that forms the personality, vice versa, or whether it's actually society that decides is unknown. But the correlation is still there nonetheless. So let me know what you think. Do you think the quirk makes the person, or do you think the person makes the quirk? Or is it just that Koei Horikoshi just writes his characters in this way and there's actually no in-universe answer? Whatever you believe, leave a comment and let me know your theory on the quirk personality enigma. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Plus Ultra.